For this project, there are five main materials that you'll need. A saucepan or pot to get some water boiling in, a mixing bowl that can fit into your saucepan without falling in, some chocolate that's on the darker side, preferably between 60 to 70 percent, a knife, and a spatula. The first step is to fill up your pot with enough water to touch the bottom of the bowl once it's resting inside of the pot. Bring this water up to a boil, and while you're waiting for that, roughly chop your chocolate and separate out two-thirds of it. Once the water is boiling, you can lower the heat all the way and place your bowl with the first two-thirds of your chocolate on top of the pot. Don't stir this at first, just let it melt. When you see that the chocolate pieces are more than half melted on their own, stir until the chocolate is completely melted and well combined. Next, you can take the bowl off the heat and add in the remaining third of chocolate that you set aside at the beginning. Stir this in to melt the new chocolate pieces and also to allow the tempered chocolate to cool. So now your chocolate should be tempered and you can tell in two ways. The first is that this chocolate is visibly glossy even though it's melted, while next to it I have a bowl of chocolate that I just heated up all at once in the microwave and stirred to combine, which is visibly more dull. Another way to test that the chocolate is tempered is by spreading a small strip on some paper or on a cutting board. I'm going to struggle with this because it's one-handed, but you'll do a much better job. What you're seeing with these strips is the tempered chocolate on the left and the non-tempered chocolate on the right. And when I touch the tempered chocolate, my finger comes away clean because it's instantly set or hardened, but the non-tempered chocolate is going to remain soft for a pretty long time. In this experiment, we will be tempering chocolate using a microwave. You will need a measuring cup, plastic or silicon bowl, and of course chocolate in a microwave. We now want to put our bowl of chocolate in the microwave for 30 seconds. After the first 30 seconds, you want to take your spatula and mix around the chocolate. At first it might look like it didn't melt, but after moving around some of the pieces you will see some chocolate is melting at the bottom of the bowl. After mixing the chocolate, we will put it in the microwave for another 30 seconds. Make sure not to rush when microwaving. If you rush when microwave, you might overheat the chocolate and destroy the crystals you're trying to make. Once you take it out of the microwave, you will see that most of the chocolate has melted after the second time in the microwave. Make sure to stir the chocolate thoroughly, mixing the remaining harder pieces of the chocolate with the melted chocolate. Once you have mixed the chocolate, microwave for another 15 seconds. After 15 seconds in the microwave, stir your chocolate thoroughly for at least 30 seconds. The chocolate should feel warm. After this thorough mixing, then microwave your chocolate one last time for 10 seconds. If the chocolate feels too hot, do not put it back in the microwave and let it sit to cool. Finally, stir your chocolate and let it cool. You have finished tempering your chocolate. To check if you are successful, you can use a spatula and place some chocolate on a parchment paper, a Ziploc bag, or a plastic wrap. This is what your chocolate would look like if it was not properly tempered. It will be hard to take off the sheet and it will leave a residue. It will easily melt, it will look dull, it will bend when you try to break it. When you successfully tempered your chocolate, it will easily come off the sheet. It will look glossy. It will snap when you try to break it. And it will not easily melt. Congratulations, you successfully tempered your chocolate. So how does this all work? As you learn more about materials, a topic that will become more and more important is crystal structures. What we mean by crystals is essentially a solid made up of atoms that are arranged in a specific three-dimensional pattern. Materials that are primarily made up of these crystals are called crystalline materials, and some of their common crystal structures are shown here. The type of crystal structure that a material is made up of can decide a lot of its characteristics. 
While chocolate isn't made up of these exact crystal structures, it still has six different crystal structures that it can be made up of. You can get its molecules to arrange into each of these structures by heating and cooling it to specific temperature ranges. When we temper chocolate, we're heating the chocolate all the way up to the point that its molecules settle into its fifth crystal structure, and that promotes the characteristics of hard and shiny chocolate with a good snap.